Hello, welcome to dinner. We're on 1 Kings chapter 8. Then Shalomo assembled the elders of Yisrael and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Yisrael, to sovereign Shalomo in Yerushalayim to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah from the city of David, which is Sion. And all the men of Yisrael assembled to sovereign Shalomo at the festival in the month of Athanim, which is the seventh new moon. And all the elders of Yisrael came, and the priests took up the ark, and brought up the ark of Jehovah, and the tent of appointment, and all the set-apart utensils that were in the tent. And the priests and the Levites brought them up. And sovereign Shalomo and all the congregation of Yisrael who had assembled with him, were with him before the ark, slaughtering so many sheep and cattle that they could not be counted or numbered. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of Jehovah to its place, into the speaking place of the house of the Most High, set apart place under the wings of the cherubim, For the cherubim spread two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim cover over the ark and its poles. And the poles extended so that the ends of the poles were seen from the set-apart place, in front of the speaking place, but they were not seen from outside, and they are there to this day. There was not in the ark only the two tablets of stone which Moshe put there at Horeb, where Jehovah made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Mizraim. And it came to be when the priests came out of the set-apart place that the cloud filled the house of Jehovah, so that the priests were unable to stand and perform the service because of the cloud. For the esteem of Jehovah filled the house of Jehovah. And Shalomo said, Jehovah has said he would dwell In the dark cloud, I have indeed built you an exalted house, an established place for you to dwell in forever. And the sovereign turned around and blessed all the assembly of Yisrael, while all the assembly of Yisrael was standing. And he said, Blessed be Jehovah, Elohim of Yisrael, who spoke with his mouth to his father David, and with his hand has filled it, saying, Since the day I brought my people Yisrael out of Mizraim, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Yisrael in which to build a house for my name to be there, but I chose David to be over my people Yisrael. And it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of Jehovah, Yeho- Elohim of Yisrael. <laughs> And Jehovah said to my father David, Because it has been in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Only you do not build the house, but your son, who is coming from your loins, he does build the house for my name. Now Jehovah has established his word which he spoke, and I have been raised up instead of my father David, and sit on the throne of Yisrael, as Jehovah promised, and built a house for the name of Jehovah, Elohim of Yisrael. And have appointed there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of Jehovah, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Mizraim. And Shalomo stood before the slaughter place of Jehovah, in front of all the assembly of Yisrael, and spread out his hands toward the heavens, and said, Jehovah, Elohim of Yisrael, there is no Elohim in the heavens above or on earth below like you, guarding your covenant and loving commitment with your servants who walk before you and with all their heart, who have guarded that which you did promise your servant David, my father. Indeed, you have both spoken with your mouth and have filled it with your hand as it is this day. And now, Jehovah, Elohim of Yisrael,
guard what you promised, your servant David, my father, saying, There is not to cease a man of yours before me, sitting on the throne of Israel, only if your sons guard their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. And now, O Elohim of Israel, please let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. For is it true, Elohim dwells on the earth? See the heavens, and the heavens of the heavens are unable to contain you. How much less this house which I have built. Yet shall you turn to the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Jehovah, my Elohim, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you today. For your eyes to be open toward this house night and day, toward the place of which you said, My name is there, to listen to the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. Then you shall hear the supplication of your servant and of your people, Yisrael, when they pray toward this place, when you hear in your dwelling place in the heavens, and shall you hear and forgive. If anyone sins against his neighbor, and he has lifted up an oath to him to cause him to swear and comes and swears before your slaughter place in this house, then hear in the heavens and act rightly rule your servants, declaring the wrongdoer wrong, bringing his way on his head, and declaring the righteous right by giving him according to his righteousness. When your people, Yisrael, are smitten before an enemy, because they have sinned against you, and they shall turn back to you and confess your name, and pray and make supplication to you in this house. Then hear in the heavens and forgive the sin of your people, Yisrael, and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, because they sin against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name, and turn from their sins, because you afflict them. Then hear in the heavens, and forgive the sin of your servants, your people, Yisrael. For you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and shall give rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is scarcity of food in the land, when there is pestilence, blight, mildew, locusts, grasshoppers, when their enemy distresses them in the land and their cities, any plague, any sickness, whatever prayer, whatever supplication made by any one of your people, Yisrael, each knowing the plague of his own heart and shall spread out his hands towards this house, then here in the heavens, your dwelling place, and forgive and act and render unto everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, because you, you alone, know the hearts of all the sons of men, so that they fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Also concerning a foreigner who is not of your people, Yisrael, but has come from a far land for your name's sake, since they hear of your great name and your strong hand and your outstretched arm, and he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, so that all peoples of the earth know your name and fear you, as do your people Yisrael. And know that this house, which I have built, is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemy in the way you send them, and they shall pray to Jehovah toward the city, which you have chosen, and toward the house, which I have built for your name. (coughs) Then shall you hear in the heavens their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, For there is no one who does not sin. 
and you become enraged with them and give them to the enemy. And they take them captive to the land of the enemy, far or near, and they shall turn back unto their heart in the land where they have been taken captive, and shall turn and make supplication to you in the land of who of those who took them captive, saying, We have sinned and acted crookedly, we have committed wrong. And they shall turn back to you with all their heart and with all their being, in the land of their enemies, who led them away, captive, and shall pray to you toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name. Then shall you hear in the heavens your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you, and all their transgressions, which they have transgressed against you, and give them compassion before those who took them captive, and they shall have compassion on them. For they are your people and your inheritance, whom you brought out of Mizraim, out of the iron furnace. Let your eyes be open to the supplication of your servant, and the supplication of your people, Yisrael, to listen to them whenever they call to you. For you have separated them unto yourself for an inheritance out of all the peoples of the earth, as you spoke by the hand of your servant Moshe, when you brought our fathers out of Mizraim, O Master, Yahovah. And it came to be, when Shalomo had ended praying all this prayer and supplication to Jehovah, that he rose up from before the slaughter place of Jehovah, from kneeling on his knees, with his hands spread up to the heavens. And he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be Jehovah, who has given rest to his people, Israel according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good word, which he promised through his servant Moshe. Yehovah our Elohim is with us, as he was with our fathers. He does not leave us nor forsake us. To incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all his ways, and to guard his commands and his laws, and his right rulings, which he commanded our fathers. And let these words of mine, with which I have made supplication, before Jehovah be near Jehovah our Elohim, day and night, to maintain the cause of his servant, and the cause of his people, Yisrael, the matter of each day, in its day. So that all the peoples of the earth might know that Jehovah is Elohim, there is no one else. Let your heart therefore be perfect to Jehovah our Elohim, to walk in his laws and guard his commands, as at this day. And the sovereign in all Yisrael with him slaughtered slaughterings before Jehovah, and Shalomo slaughtered slaughterings of peace offerings, which he slaughtered to Jehovah. Twenty-two thousand bulls and one hundred and twenty thousand sheep. Thus the sovereign and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of Jehovah. On that day the sovereign set apart the middle of the courtyard that was in the front of the house of Jehovah, for there be made ascending offerings. And the grain offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze slaughter place that was before Jehovah was too small to contain the ascending offering and the grain offering and the fat of the peace offerings. And Shelemo at that time performed the festival, and all Yisrael with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the wadi of Mithraim, before Jehovah Elohim, seven days and seven days, fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people... Away, And they blessed the sovereign and went to their tents, rejoicing and glad of heart 
for all the goodness that Jehovah had done for his servant David and for his people Israel. And it came to be when Shalomo had finished building the house of Jehovah and the house of the sovereign and all the desire of Shalomo, which he was pleased to do, that Jehovah appeared to Shalomo the second time, and he had appeared to him at Gabon. And Jehovah said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. I have set this house apart, which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall always be there. And you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, if you guard my laws and my right rulings, then I shall establish the throne of your reign over Israel forever, as I promised David your father, saying, There is not to cease a man of yours on the throne of Israel. If you at all turn back, you or your sons, from following me, and do not guard my commands, my laws, which I have set before you, but shall go and serve other mighty ones and bow yourselves to them, then I shall cut off Israel from the face of the soil which I have given them, and send away from my presence this house which I have set apart for my name. And Yisrael shall be a proverb and a mockery among the peoples. And this house which has been exalted, everyone who passes by it shall be astonished and hiss, and say, Why has Jehovah done thus to this land and to this house? <laughs> then they shall say, Because they have forsaken Jehovah their Elohim, who brought their fathers out of the land of Misraim, and they took hold of other mighty ones, and bowed themselves to them and served them. That is why Jehovah has brought all this evil on them. And it came to be at the end of twenty years that Shelomo had built the two houses, the house of Jehovah and the house of the sovereign. Haram, the sovereign of Sor, had supplied Shelomo with cedar and cypress and gold as much as he desired. Then sovereign Shelomo gave Haram twenty cities in the land of Galil. And Haram came from Sor to see the cities which Shalomo had given him, but they were not right in his eyes. And he said, What are these cities you have given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul, as they are to this day. And Haram sent the sovereign one hundred and twenty talents of gold, and this is the purpose of the compulsory labor which Sovereign Shalomo raised to build the house of Jehovah and his own house, and Milo, and the wall of Yerushalayim, and Hatzor, and Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, sovereign of Misraim, had gone up and taken Gezer and burned it with fire, and had killed the Canaanites who dwelt in the city, and had given it as a payment for the bride of his daughter, Shalomo's wife. And Shalomo built Gezer, and lower Beth Horon, and Baalath, and Tamar in the wilderness in the land of Yehuda, and all the storage cities that Shalomo had, and cities for his chariots, and cities for his cavalry, and whatever Shalomo desired to build in Yerushalayim, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his rule. All the people who were left of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Yebusites, who were not of the children of Israel. Their descendants who were left in the land after them, whom the children of Israel had not been able to destroy completely, from these Shalomo raised compulsory labor as it is to this day. But Shalomo did not make slaves of the children of Israel because they were men of battle, and his servants, and his rulers, and his officials, and commanders of his chariots and his cavalry. These were the chiefs of the officials who were over the work of Shalomo, 550 who ruled over the people who did the work. But the daughter of Pharaoh came up from the city of David to her house that he built for her. Then he built Milo. 
And three times a year Shalomo brought ascending offerings and peace offerings on the slaughter place which he had built for Jehovah. And he burned incense with which was before Jehovah, thus gave completeness to the house. And sovereign Shalomo built a fleet of ships at Etzon Geber, which is near Eloth, on the shore of the Sea of Reeds in the land of Adam. And Horam sent his servants with the fleet, seamen who knew the sea, who worked with the servants of Shalomo. And they went to Ophir and took 420 talents of gold from there and brought it to sovereign Shalomo. <coughs> And the sovereignness of Sheba heard of the report of Shalomo concerning the name of Jehovah and came to try him with hard questions. And she came to Yerushalayim with a very great company, with camels that bore spices, very much gold and precious stones. And she came to Shalomo and she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. And Shalomo answered all her questions. There was no matter hidden for the sovereign that he did not make known to her. And the sovereignness of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Shalomo in the house that he had built, and the food on his table, and the seating of his servants, and the service of his waiters, and their attire, and his cupbearers, and his ascending offering, which he offered in the house of Jehovah. And there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the sovereign, The word I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom was true. But I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And see, I have not been told the half. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the report which I heard. Blessed are your men and blessed are these servants who stand continually before you who are hearing your wisdom. Blessed be Jehovah your Elohim who delighted in you and put you on the throne of Israel, because Jehovah has loved Israel forever. Therefore he made you sovereign to do right rulings and righteousness. And she gave the sovereign 120 talents of gold and very many spices and precious stones. Never again did so many spices come as the sovereignness of Sheba gave to sovereign Shalomo. And also the ships of Haram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought, among, brought all mug wood, a great many, and precious stones from Ophir. And the sovereign made steps of the all mug wood for the house of Jehovah and for the sovereign's house, also lyres and harps for singers. No such all mug wood has come or been seen to this day. And Sovereign Shalomo gave the sovereignness of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides what he gave her according to the hand of Sovereign Shalomo. And she turned and went to her land, she and her servants. And the weight of gold that came to Shalomo yearly was 666 talents of gold, besides that from men of travel and the prophet of traders, and from all the sovereigns of Arabia and from the governors of the land. This, and sovereign Shalomo made 200 large shields of beaten gold. 600 pieces of gold went into each shield, and 300 shields of beaten gold. Three minas of gold went into each shield, and the sovereign put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. And the sovereign made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with refined gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round at the back, and there were armrests on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the armrest. And twelve lions were standing there, one on each side of the six steps, the like of it was never made in any rain. And all the drinking vessels of Sovereign Shalomo were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of refined gold, not of silver, for this was reckoned of little value in the days of Shalomo. 
For the sovereign had ships of Tarshish at sea with the fleet of Haram. Once every three years the ships of Tarshish came bringing gold and silver, ivory, and apes and baboons. The sovereign Shalemo was greater than any of the sovereigns of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the earth sought the presence of Shalemo to hear his wisdom, which Elohim had put in his heart. And there were each bringing his present objects of silver and objects of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules, the matter of a year by year. And Shalemo gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the sovereign in Yerushalayim. And the sovereign made silver as common in Yerushalayim as stones, and he made cedars of plenty as the sycamores which are in the low country. And Shalemo had horses brought out from Mithraim, and Kue, the sovereign's merchants, brought them in Kue at a price. And a chariot came up and went out from Mithraim for six hundred pieces of silver and a horse, one hundred and fifty. And so, by the hand, they brought them out to all the sovereign of the Hittites and the sovereign of Aram.